Well, I'm in here by myself today. The band's not here. Long story, plans changed. Aren't you used to that in this season of COVID? Trying to gather, you can't gather. Um, but what we find a way every week. And so we found a way this week. I am so grateful for our tech team, our video editor, Zach. So the music that we're going to be bringing you today is music that was recorded for past Sundays. You may recognize some of it, um, but we're going to worship together again. And um, I hope that, that you will sit back, open your hearts and minds, and receive what God would say to us today. Another dive into the Psalms today. And so, Lord, we pray your presence with us just where we are, just as we are. Meet us, bless us, help us to grow deeper in our relationship with you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. has written a lot of books on prayer. He wrote a book on the Psalms. And so many of his thoughts about how we pray and how the Psalms help us um, were really inspiring to me this week. And so they inspired a prayer that I would like for us to pray together. Let us pray. Lord, we want to express ourselves. We want to be noticed but in our human frailty, we become like the Pharisee who prayed, Thank you, God, that I am so good, that I am not like that person over there. Forgive us, we pray. Our prayers are awkward. 
because we're usually looking for something other than you. Our prayers are small because we forget how great you are. Our prayers are embarrassing because you catch us in sin. We're more comfortable praying to a God who tells us what we want to hear rather than a God who is. And so here we are, unfinished creatures, longing, seeking. But God, you who spoke the universe into being spoke the first word. And so no matter what we say, our prayers are really just an answer to you, to the one who sought us before we sought anything. And so thank you, God, for the Psalms that help us answer you, that train us in conversation with you. Hear our prayers, O Lord, the silent and unspoken prayers, those we pray aloud. We pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe you are my fortress, you are my portion.
Good morning, KUMC. My name is Paul Mojica, and I am your liturgist today. Today's scripture reading is Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. But those who delight in the law of the Lord, and those who meditate in the law day and night, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and those whose leaves do not wither. Whatever they do, they prosper. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hey, it's the tradition in our church to say good morning. So on the count of three, let's say good morning. One, two, three. Good morning. Good morning. Does anybody know what a rainforest is? If you were going to describe a rainforest, what would you say? Well, a rainforest has lots of beautiful greenery. There's a lot of life there. The plants are very healthy looking there and they're very happy and there's lots of animals. Well, what about a desert? If you were going to describe a desert to somebody, what would you say? Deserts are dry. There's not a lot of green plants there, and there's not much life going on in the desert. Did you know that the Bible tells us that there are two very different kinds of people, too? Psalm 1 says that those that love God and follow his commands are considered blessed. And those who do not follow God's commands and hurt other people are called wicked. So when I think of wicked, I think of the wicked witch. She wasn't very nice. She hurt other people's and she was kind of evil. Well, Psalm 1-3 says, The blessed person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever that person does prospers. Well, wow, I want to be like that person. I want to be a person who loves God and is like a strong tree. Imagine a great and beautiful tree covered in green leaves. It's so wonderful to love God. God delights in us when we think about him. He wants us to be like that strong tree by the flowing stream of water. It's kind of like our rainforest. There's a lot of life there. However, he wants us to avoid being like the wicked. So let's see what the Bible says about the wicked. Psalm 1 verse 4 says, Not so with the wicked. They are like the chaff that blow, the, the wind blows away. So what is chaff? Well, chaff is a very dry plant. So have you ever picked up a dead and dry leaf and then crumpled it up? What happened? The leaf broke into many pieces and the wind probably blew it away. The Bible tells us that bad people, the ones that don't love God and treat others nicely, are like the dry plant that the wind blows away. So we don't want to be like the people that are blowing aimlessly in the wind. We want to be stable people, people that are created by, strong, by streams of water. The stream with the tree has life. Likewise, Jesus calls himself the living water. So Jesus is explaining that he can give us eternal life. Eternal life is given when we put our faith in Jesus, and he is the only way that we can become righteous. So without Jesus, we would be like the dry, crumpled leaf. But with Jesus' salvation, we are like a tree planted by streams of water, and we are healthy and living like the rainforest. So will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for helping us learn how to take the right path in life. Help us to grow strong in your faith so that we can be like the stable tree bearing fruit for you, Lord. Give us the strength and knowledge to guide others to your love. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, I miss you all very much. I hope you have a great week next week, and I want you to practice 
being good, practice reading your Bible, practice doing all of the things that Jesus wants you to do so that you can grow up to be a strong, stable tree. So I love you and miss you. I'll see you soon. to share a sermon with you about Psalm 1, and it would help if you had a picture in your mind, a picture of a tall cypress tree. Maybe Zach can help us out, put one on the screen. Um, I want you to think about a cypress tree because it's a good example of a tree that grows by a stream of water like the psalm says. My mother-in-law loved cypress trees. I don't know where it came from. I don't know what it was about, but she loved cypress trees. And so when she and her husband retired, they wanted to buy land in central Texas. And her big criteria was there had to be cypress trees. And so they looked and they looked and they found properties that would, would be perfect. Big house already there. But when she looked around and didn't see cypress trees, wasn't going to happen. And she stood her ground And eventually they found property with cypress trees. And maybe she was just being sneaky because everybody knows that cypress trees grow by streams of water. So she was able to get property with a stream on it, which is what she was holding out for, I think. Um, So I think of my mother-in-law when I think about the trees that grow by the streams of water. And I think about the um, office park that's kind of near my house where somebody spent a lot of money and bought a lot of mature cypress trees, and now they're all dead because there's no stream. And so the Bible gives us this very clear image, trees growing by streams of water. People say cypress trees like to have their feet wet. And if you've um, been in the rivers around here, like Wimberley, you've seen those cypress trees with their feet in the water. And once you get away from the water, they're not there. And so scripture gives us a very clear picture of what the life of faith is like, like trees by the, by the streams of water, trees that have their roots in God's word, in a relationship with God. And so Psalm 1 talks about that. Long ago, about a year ago, I think, I preached a sermon all about trees in the Bible. There's a lot of trees in the Bible. And trees are used most often in the Bible uh, as a symbol for people. Uh, We have a lot in common with trees. We put down roots. We grow. We die. 
and we need our roots to be grounded in God. Later, Jesus would say, I am the vine, you are the branches, and so abide in me, stay connected to me. And so we have that image of a tree that, that has healthy leaves and produces fruit and, and is beautiful next to a plant that is just chaff, that is just dead. And so scripture tells us that we need to be rooted in God. We need to be rooted in God's law and God's word. And so I'm planning for 2021. Um, we're hoping we can be planning to be back in the building in the Family Life Center for Advent, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, um, but still online for those of you that want and need that. Um, that option will still be here. But in 2021, I'm going to start preaching from the beginning of the Bible to the end, from Genesis to Revelation over the year, and inviting you to read along and read through the Bible. And I'm going to be giving you lots of tools. And at this time where we need to keep the church strong, the most important thing we can do is just read God's word, just be rooted in the law and word of God. Um, and so Psalm 1 talks about that. And so I've been doing this sermon series on the Psalms, and I intentionally didn't start with Psalm 1. It would have been a good place to start, but I wanted us to get a few Psalm series, uh, Psalm sermons, uh, in our mind, under our belt, before we talked about this one, because this one is so vitally important. Psalm 1 is the door to the rest of the book of Psalms and the rest of what's called wisdom literature in the Bible, Psalms, Proverbs, the book of Job, um, the, the deep wisdom of the Bible. And Psalm 1 offers such a clear picture, two paths, the tree planted by the water and the tree that isn't. Those rooted in the word of God, in, in faith and relationship with God, and those that aren't. And we need to know that so much that it's, it's really simple. It's pretty black and white. And a lot of us don't like black and white faith. A lot of us are refugees from churches that were so black and white and couldn't see gray. And we're pretty closed-minded. And we like that our Methodist church is open-minded. But every once in a while, we need some black and white. There's this kind of tree. And there's the dead tree. There's a living tree and the dead tree. Which tree do you want to be because you have a choice? And when you study the very early church as people were converting to Christianity from pagan religions that had no grounding in morality, that didn't know the Ten Commandments, didn't know the law, they started here. There's two paths. Which one are you going to choose? And the trees planted by the streams of water are the trees that grow and live. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly. And so I think about a time in my life where, where that was really brought to my, to my knowledge. Um, it was when my children were very young. They were in preschool. I was getting back into church after a season of, of not being part of the church. And my faith was, was growing and I was developing a grown up faith. Um, and my husband had to have heart surgery. He had a heart condition from birth, and as a child, he had to have that monitored. And he was always told, somewhere in your maybe mid-30s, you're going to have to have heart surgery. And so sure enough, in his mid-30s, the doctor said, it's time, and he had to have a valve replaced. And it was dangerous and scary. And my faith was not real strong at the time, and I was very afraid. I had two little children, and I didn't know what I would do if anything happened to him. I, I wasn't working. I had no source of income. He was I was completely dependent on, on him. All three of us were, and I was afraid. And so he was going to go get a second opinion in Houston. We were living in Austin and had no friends and family. Well, no family here in this area. And so he was going to go to Houston to get a second opinion, but there was nobody to take care of my kids because it needed to be all day and putting them to bed and giving them a bath. And I had no one that I could ask. And so he was going to go by himself. And I was just heartbroken that, that I just felt so alone and I had no one to call on. Um, but I was going to this church and my kids were going to preschool there, um, Oak Hill United Methodist Church. And so that morning I took my kids to preschool and I was visibly upset. And one of the moms stopped me and, and asked what was wrong. 
Don't you love church ladies? Don't you love church people? Um, I told her what was wrong. And she just said, well, that's easy. We can take care of that. And I remember it clear as day. I remember being in the church kitchen and hearing the hum of the very loud ice maker as Karen and Kim and Debbie just started making it happen before my eyes. I had somebody to pick my kids up from school. I had somebody to keep my kids overnight. I had somebody to bring my family dinner. I had somebody to drop them off at school the next day. Boom, boom, boom. They just took care of it. And I was overwhelmed by the love of them just saying, you go take care of your husband. And we circled up by the loud ice machine and prayed and cried. And it makes me cry now to think about that moment. That's what church has been for me. And it breaks my heart to see the way um, we churches are just barely holding on right now. Because in that moment, all I could think was that I had just learned about Psalm 1, and I didn't remember it correctly, but the way I remember it was the trees of the Lord are watered abundantly. And I was God's tree. I was planting myself in the right place, and God was saying, I'm going to water you. I'm going to give you what you need. I'm going to take care of you. That's what churches do when we do church well. And I was a stranger in that town. I didn't know where else to go but church. And so we need you back. We need you connected. We need you connected in whatever way you can be. We've got a great Facebook community. Um, we've got all kinds of, of missions and ministries here that you can plug into. Um, but we need to be standing by right now because there's going to be people that were as lost and lonely as I was that day. And they need you. They need you to be their, their root system to pour water on them, to help them not dry up. And so I hope you'll stay connected. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for giving. Um, we had a scary giving week last week, um, but somebody came through again with another big check. God is good. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly. Um, we need you. You're God's tree. <laughs> Grow and be planted in a good place. Amen. turn off the lights and lock the doors and I hope that as I go out into the world and you go out into the world that we go with God that we go in peace this afternoon at one o'clock is our church council meeting um, we'll be we'll be meeting online and so be in prayer for your church um, for your world go in peace amen
like, comment, and subscribe.